you have a suggestion for a rock star impact podcast guest go to impactpodcast.com and just click be a guest to recommend someone today this edition of the impact podcast is brought to you by eri eri has a mission to protect people the planet and your privacy and is the largest fully integrated it and electronics asset disposition provider and cybersecurity focused hardware destruction company in the United States and maybe even the world. For more information on how ERI can help your business properly dispose of outdated electronic hardware devices, please visit eridirect.com. This episode of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by Closed Loop Partners. Closed Loop Partners is a leading circular economy investor in the United States with an extensive network of Fortune 500 corporate investors, family offices, institutional investors, industry experts, and impact partners. Closed Loop's platform spans the arc of capital from venture capital to private equity, bridging gaps, and fostering synergies to scale the circular economy. To find Closed Loop Partners, please go to www.closedlooppartners.com. Welcome to another edition of the Impact Podcast. This is a very special edition. I've got with us today, Dr. Jonathan Leary. He's the founder and CEO of Remedy Place. Welcome to the Impact Podcast, Dr. Leary. Thank you for having me. Hey, you know, uh, just in truth in advertising, Dr. Leary, I love your place, Remedy Place. I'm going to talk about some of my experiences there. I've signed up now to be a quarterly member. I just think it's a great oasis uh, in, in the city of Los Angeles, which is where the place I've been using, your place in West Hollywood. And I just want to say thank you for, for building it and having your vision, because I think you've developed something that has is going to go long and far to help a lot of people feel a lot better. Oh, man, that, me that means a lot. I'm happy that you like it. You know, before we get going and talking about Remedy Place and for our, for our viewers and listeners who want to find Dr. Leary and his colleagues and sign up to go try Remedy Place, you can go to www.remedyplace.com. Dr. Leary, talk a little bit about where you grew up and what got you on this inspirational and impactful journey of helping people feel better and good health care. Yeah, um, growing up, I always wanted to be a doctor. You know, I went the traditional route of going pre-med. My mom and my sister both worked in the hospital setting. And, you know, going through pre-med, you need a lot of volunteer hours. You need to have an amazing resume so that you can get accepted into med school. And for four years through all the volunteering and being in that hospital setting for so long, it was like my junior year of undergrad. And I'm like, wait, this sucks. You know, I'm like, doctors' lifestyle you know, they are overworked, they're not sleeping, they're unable to take care of themselves, they're away from their family. And in also like the hospital environment, you know, it's so toxic, so sad, so depressing. And no one wants to be there. No one's really happy. And it's hard when there's so many patients, not enough time, everyone's stressed out un and, and unwell. And I think I just saw too many things that were like morally and ethically different than I would want to treat my patients, you know? And what happened was I almost was like, okay, maybe I'll take a year off before I go to med school because I don't know if this is actually what I want to do. But on the side, during my whole undergrad, I was a trainer. And within my personal training, I always really focused on, on really the biomechanical side of making sure like people were pain free. So I was always fascinated more on like the rehab side. And I was like, oh, maybe I should just go and be a physical therapist. Then I volunteered in some physical therapy offices. I'm like, this is kind of boring. You know, I grew up in Rhode Island, so it wasn't too exciting and there was nothing too elaborate there. But one of my friend's dad um, was a chiropractor. And he's like, you know, John, you know, chiropractors in the state of California are primary care physicians. You know, they just can't prescribe medication and they can't puncture the skin. But, you know, maybe you should look into that. So I kind of just reached out to a school um, just to, like here, like, I never knew what a chiropractor was, never went to a chiropractor, um, but I was really just fascinated. I'm like, oh, maybe it's a scope. And I ended up finding a school, applying just to see if it would happen, and, and it worked out. And I think, I was like, you know what, like, maybe this is just my ticket to LA to leave my small town. And if I don't like it, I can always change. 
And, you know, the first two years of chiropractic school is the same as, you know, any medical program or, you know, dentistry, medical, alternative medicine. It's really about the bare minimums of science at that stage. And I was like, oh, like, I don't know if this is for me, but I just like kept going because I knew I'm like, it might make sense. And during that time, the moment that I started school, mm. I started working on the business plan for Remedy because it was like, okay, what is a, a different type of practice? What is like, what does this dream practice look like? And I just knew that like, it would take a lot of hard work. And every single Sunday for those four years, I was working on Remedy Place. And when I graduated, I went to the bank with this 158 page business plan and a binder. And I was like, all right, this is my business idea. This is what I want to do. This is what I need money wise. And the woman kind of laughed at me and she's like, sir, you have no money and all this student loan debt. How am I supposed to give you a loan? And I'm like, that's, that's why I need a loan, you know, but I didn't know. <laughs> I think I'm here. <laughs> so I ended up pivoting. I ended up opening a concierge practice, not because it was fancy, but it was because of the most affordable. And it was a practice that focused on surgery prevention and chronic pain rehabilitation. And within the first couple of months of practice, I took on some high profile patients that had some really amazing success stories. And after three months, I had a wait list. So for five years, I got to travel the world with cool people, cool families. I started with just pro athletes, but then quickly realized I'm like, why am I just working with the healthiest bodies in the world on a regular basis when the average person's far more sick and in a lot more pain? So then I started working with people in the music industry and in the film industry and corporate level executives. And it was amazing. You know, I think I kind of became known as the guy that you would go to if you didn't want surgery. So most of my patients would be like, hey, I was told I need to get surgery. I don't want to. I heard you're the guy. And over the years, not one of my patients ever got surgery after my care. And the coolest thing was, you know, a year into my practice, you know, I had the wait list. I was so busy. It was such a, a big shift for me. But one of my patients, she was like, hey, you know, like if your end goal is to change healthcare, how are you going to do that seeing one patient at a time? And that's when I realized I'm like, oh, you know what? I need to bring Remedy back to the table. And I think my patients kind of became my mentors over those five years. And I worked with some of the most brilliant minds all over the world. And I was so grateful and I learned so much. And I got to use those five years in practice to, con to continually update the business plan after my own clinical evidence and my own market research of like, what worked, what didn't work? You know, what were my patients willing to do? What were they not willing to do? What were their common stressors? And when I started looking at all the business gaps, but also the health gaps, but then also learning the business side, I was finally able to open up the club just about four years ago, the first club. But, 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 but this is fascinating. Let's step back. You saw the, the dark side of let's call it the sick care business that your mom and sister were in. So you knew you wanted to, you know, stay away from the dark side of, of, of the, of the, what was, what is the medical world, but you saw there was a darkness to that, that really you didn't dig. What made you prescient enough though? And what gave you the entrepreneurial bug to not only take that you were going to become a doctor during your, your chiropractic school journey, but also wanted to become concurrently an entrepreneur. Where did that bug come from? And what made you think that that was, that was the way to go? Yeah. You know, I think, I think to start, I definitely, I want to make sure that I never put a negative picture around our healthcare system. Cause I yeah. think, no, no. Uh, you know, I think, I think in short, it's like our medical program is to teach people medicine. So they're just practicing medicine. Right. Um, and I think for me, it was it was so weird because I never was exposed to alternative medicine. And when I moved to LA, I'm like, who are all these crazy weirdos? You know, like right. talking about energy, all these things. And I, it was so, I'm such a scientific guy that it was so strange for me. But then you really start to understand how powerful this human body is and its capabilities. But um, I, will, I won't go off on that tangent. I think, you know, it's always been in me like that. I always knew that I wanted to do something, you know, I always had this inner entrepreneurial self. Yeah. Like even when I was in middle school, like me and one of my best friends started a landscaping company. And every summer we had like 20 lawns every week, you know, like I've right. always been like this that yeah. knew it had to be something different. That's fascinating. So now you have these uh, master classes. You're getting master classes from the people you're treating, these leaders and legends in music and entertainment and, and sports and athletics. 
So you have these master classes who are encouraging you now to go follow your dream. So about four years ago or so, you open up the first remedy place in WeHo. Is that what you did? Correct. Yeah. And I'd been there and I have to say amazing place, uh, life changing place. I'm going to give my experience a little bit, but talk a little bit about the how much did you rework your business plan? The original 50, 158 pages from uh, your you know five years prior. And what was the original vision and mission when you open up a remedy place? We hope. Yeah, I think initially when I started it, you know, in 2012, it was. I just wanted to create a different environment. You know, I wanted to create a better looking environment that was exact opposite of a clinic or a hospital and then create a, you know, a more hospitality experience. Right. What I found the biggest shift in my pra- in my practice and that due diligence of the updates and changes that happened outside of, you know, some of the technologies that advanced over the time, the biggest thing that I found was the social component. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, like we were talking about before, you know, how like you're having fun doing it with other people. Yep. For me, it was not just like, oh, like, let's just create a new social activity. It was in order for me to fix my patients problems, they had to make lifestyle changes. So that was always part of like the, the initial onboarding was making sure that my patients would make those lifestyle changes. because Those were the only way to actually fix the root cause of their issues. Mm. So throughout the five years, the biggest thing that I was always told was, You know, Dr. Leary, I feel incredible. This issue's gone. I've never felt this good. But this new lifestyle is really isolating. And they're like, everything that I normally do when I socialize is filled with either temptation or toxin. And I was like, oh, that's so fascinating that we know how important human connection is for our health. And everything that we normally do when we socialize is mostly detrimental to our health. So I was like, all right, you know, when I create this first social wellness club, I wanted to enhance their health and their social life at the same time. Got it. Got it. So from for our, for the uninitiated, for again, we've got Dr. Jonathan Leary with us today. He's the founder and CEO of Remedy Place. To find Remedy Place and to go try it out for yourself, go to www.remedyplace.com. What does holistic wellness mean to you? And what have you then in, in, instilled into Remedy Place and baked in as part of the DNA from your original launch and what you're doing now uh, as you build more locations? Yeah, I mean, holistic to me just means natural, right? I think at a time where people are looking for quick quick fixes, these quick fixes are always Band-Aids. Yeah. And I think we look at how magnificent the body is, like, you break a bone, your body rebuilds that bone. You get a cut, your body scabs it over and heals. Like if you give the body what it needs and take away what it doesn't need, it innately heals. And I've seen it over and over again where doing my patient's blood work, doing all their functional medicine, and then fixing all of these imbalances, it is wild that my sports medicine practice ended up now treating people with gut issues with whether it was gut issues, cancer, autoimmune condition, mental health problems. And this is where it isn't like me going out and purposely treating those things. It's all of a sudden my patients that had the back issue, the shoulder issue that also had the gut problem. They're like, hey, like not only is my shoulder getting better, but I'm not having those gut issues anymore. And then I just start realizing over and over again, I saw so many patients, I'm like, wow, like you just, the body heals, like just give it what it wants. And I think for me, especially in the world where right now, like this evolving market of recovery, or even like people say biohacking, like it, sometimes it insinuates with like, whether it's biohacking or these supplements, it's always like this shortcut or this quick fix. And it's like, there's no such thing as the shortcut with your health. And it takes a lot of hard work. And I'm like, your body's your number one asset. I'm like, if you're not investing into your body and your mind, that's a problem. Cause it's like, I think it's like 90 something percent of all adult conditions are inflicted by their lifestyle. So it's like, if you're not well as an adult, it's likely that your lifestyle is probably causing whatever issue you have. And although it's hard, it's, it's vital to make these changes. And it's cool that the whole world is currently waking up because I think people are finally realizing that the only one that's going to make them healthy is them. Dr. Leary, you know, timing is everything in life for everything that we do. Um, 
Talk a little bit about timing. 2012, you were a visionary. You were prescient in your vision, obviously, for Remedy Place. And then take it to 2019 when you actually launched Remedy Place WeHo. Would you argue that the timing was even better in 2019 than 12? Was the world more ready for it? Let's say you were able to raise the money in 2012. Would you have the massive success you found today versus when you opened in 19? Because did the world evolve even more in terms of the socialization and the rise of Wim Hof and and Laird Hamilton and their talk of ice baths and uh, and 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 ice plunging? cryotherapy and the, and the rise of uh, the success and people, athletes and entertainers uh, leveraging cryotherapy for health and wellness and better performance, or was either time going to be good to, to launch Remedy Place when you look backwards now? Yeah. I mean, I, be, I believe that everything happens for a reason yeah. and I don't think the concept would have blown up as fast or at all in 2012 you know, what's so funny is like when I was originally talking about this concept and, you know, everyone thought I was crazy. They'd be like, you know, people are going to go to a spa more than once a month. And I'm like, it's not a spa. I'm like, people are going to go every day like they go to the gym every day. That's right. No one got it. Even even when I finally got the investors the first round, you know, every investor so far, except for one, is actually a patient of mine. So there's like a beautiful story behind even the funding behind Remedy. But most of them have invested in Remedy mostly because of they're like, we just trust you. Yeah. But I don't think I don't think anyone actually got the concept until they walked in the door the first time. And I think with the pandemic, the pandemic shifted everything. Cause I think the whole world woke up. The whole world understood if they were healthy or unhealthy. And if they were unhealthy, how like no one else was gonna help fix that other than them. And you know, what's interesting is we hosted the Global Wellness Summit in New York this year, earlier in the year, and all of the top global trends, I'm not sure if you're, you're familiar with that trends report, but every year they release a trends report of the, what the future is of the health and wellness industry. And it was self-care. It was human connection. It was environments that heal. It was, um, you know, alternative medicine. It was everything, part, every single pillar of our business we made the top 10 and I was like, Oh wow. Like this is really happening. And I think it's the perfect time in the world. It all happened for this specific reason. And like, there's just this weird magnet to this company. And I just feel like we're in such a flow state and doing exactly what we're meant to be doing. And, you know, every week goes by and I'm like, I'm just not dreaming big enough on how big I really think remedy can be. And I look back at like each of my quarterly goals and I'm like, oh, I wasn't thinking big enough. And it's, it's just the amount of things happening behind the scenes is so insane. And I genuinely think that we have a real chance at making a global impact on people's health. I have no doubt in that, by the way, after now having been a user myself and, uh, and signing up to be a, a member, I have zero doubt in that. Why don't we, for fun and also um, educational purposes, why don't we walk our listeners and viewers through um, a tour of Remedy Place of what actually, when you walk in, how did you set it up and envision it? And, how, and, and what are the services, integrative and holistic services that are now available for people who want to come and enjoy your wonderful uh, social wellness place? Yeah. I mean, we like to say that we're designed to heal. So when you walk into a clinic or a hospital, there's a thing called white coat syndrome. You know, you have this negative physiological response where your heart rate goes up, your body tenses, you're in an environment that doesn't make you feel good. If you don't feel well and you're going into an environment that's working against you, right? counterintuitive. So our right. whole thing is in this design to heal concept is let's be the exact opposite of a clinic. Let's look at everything that applies to your senses from the sound to the scent, to the textures, to the tones, to the flow, to the materials like every single thing in there every detail has purpose right. and you know using that the reason why that was even such a big focus was because as a concierge doctor working out of my patients homes i realized that hey when i walk into my patient's home and they're in their comfort zone their guard is down and i, I have the most success when they're in their comfort zone 
So it was really like, how do we make people feel as cozy as possible? Like they're walking into their home. Mm-hmm. So when you walk into the club, you're greeted by our concierges or our remedy specialist. There's an amazing lounge with a bar in the back, but no alcohol, um, you know, with non-alcoholic spirits and healthy snacks like air one. And, you know, our whole thing, we have this gorgeous circular flow. So all of the tours, there's no dead ends. You know, you start with the hyperbaric chambers on your left. And then you, as you walk down for the West Hollywood club, um, oh. you, you're walking by three infrared sauna suites. So right. each one of the infrared sauna suites, you get that room for an hour. You have your amenities, you have your shower, you have your gorgeous, uh, you know, black infrared sauna. Then next we have our breathwork ice bath class. We're the first place in the world to create a commercialized breathwork ice bath class where you do 11 minutes of breathwork, then you pick a song, and then you're coached through up to six minutes and the ice cold plunge. We call it the six minute club. Um, Then we have cryotherapy. Then we have your acupuncture, your cupping, your chiropractic, your physio, your vitamin IVs, your vitamin injections, your functional medicine, your lymphatic massage device. We have these new remedy rollers, which are these automatic foam rollers that spin underneath you. And it's like a nice way to really, you know, get into like deep into the muscles. It's a really amazing massage. And then we have this gorgeous soundproof glass atrium that we do group experiences in. So in there, we do like group acupuncture. We do AccuSound, which is group acupuncture in a sound bath. We do all different types of meditations. Um, we also do doctor and instructor stretch mobility classes, educational classes, and our meditation room also doubles as a cinema. So we do a thing called watch and drip, where for groups of four or more, you can reserve the room and get IVs and watch a movie. And then in New York, we added in a contrast suite where you can have the ice baths and sauna in one room for group experiences. We added a red light bed. Um, and then in the future clubs, we've added a lot more. Got it. So um there's something for everyone or a lot for whoever wants to use it i mean so i mean and i just came in as a non-member and walked in the first time made an appointment the day before and my nephew justin and i used it and we had the breath work and the plunge and the it was just it was just such a great experience that once you do it it's and if you have the time it just you just got to go back. It's like you said, going to the gym. You just don't want to not do it every day because you know how good you feel after it. So we might as well come come back and do it every day and get that feeling every day. And that's our promise. Like our promise is, you will always leave feeling better than you walked in. And that's just like a powerful thing to be able to promise someone because you know we're all struggling and everyone everyone has all these stressors and and life can be challenging at times. And it's like. What we need to do is make sure that the healthier we are, the better we can handle all stressors, the better that ripples into like every aspect of our lives. And I think, you know, what's crazy in the U.S. is life expectancy has gone down the past three years in a row. People are sicker than they've ever been. We have the number one pharmaceutical sales in the world, but we're one of the sickest countries. You know, it's like clearly what I think we've made a lot of advancements in modern science that help with emergencies, amazing surgeries amazing medicines that will save your life, but we're not making people healthy. And that's where I see the biggest gap here is where this is why I think self-care will be bigger than the fitness industry because we need preventative care. And that's what self-care is. Self-care is longevity. Self-care is counteracting stress. It is preventative. And it's what's going to make you feel good mentally, physically, emotionally. True. Um, So you open in 2019 and uh, when did you start to feel like, okay, this is going to work. People are digging it. People are using it. People are signing up and coming back. Was it a month, a week? Was it a year into it? Where did you lay in bed and say, okay, we got something. This is going to actually, I'm going to, it's going to, this is not only going to survive, but I'm going to get, it's just replicable and I could take it on the, take it outside of WeHo and take, uh, take it on the road. Yeah. I mean, I folded my practice into remedy. So instantaneously week one, it took off, you know, and I think we, we landed so much press. We got so much attention. Um, and then, you know, March 16th, the world shut down. So, you know, it was like three and a half months into it. I was, I thought like we didn't raise a lot of money at that point. And 
I was like, I never expected to not have money coming in. So it was when they said we were going to close for two weeks, I was like, oh, we can't close for two weeks. Like we need to figure this out. And then we didn't have to close because under my, under my license, we were essential. However, in order to make it safe for everyone while the world was figuring it out and creating the safety protocols for the team and everyone, like we were closed for three months. We didn't get the first round of PPP loan. And I was like, oh shit, like we have a, a lot of people on the team and I want to make sure that they're financially okay. We have a big rent. Our landlord would not give us a break. Um, and I was like, oh wow, like there's a run right here. Like if we don't, if we can't open or we, you know, don't get another one of these PPP loans, we're in trouble. But you know what? We got that second PPP loan and we started allowing people to like trickle in. And we were open a couple hours, a couple of days a week, and then slowly open more and more. And ever since then, it just slowly cr climbed and grew. And even with all the restrictions and us not being like a social wellness club. Right it continued to scale and year over year, we doubled in revenue. And although it, it slowed down our footprint of scaling more locations, it allowed us to have time to really build a really strong foundation. And I actually think universally, like it's another situation where if that didn't happen, we probably would have signed on a lease right away and we weren't ready for that, you know? So I always, I, as long as I know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, I trust the process, you know, I'm, this yeah. is my path, this is my love. I work my ass off. You know, I work nonstop, but I do it because I love this. Right. So I think as long as I'm a good person and I work really hard and I'm fulfilling my dream, you know, where, wherever the universe takes me or wherever this lands, I trust that it will be where it needs to be. That's a great attitude. And I have to get, first of all, I have to give this, this podcast credit. It was because of Ross McKay, who was kind enough to come on this podcast and talk about his wonderful plant-based food company uh, that he mentioned that he would go to your place and he would bring employees and have meetings there and enjoy the benefits with his employees. And it was just a wonderful way to make his employees feel comfortable to open up to him. As you talk about the home approach, making it that the third place it's work, it's almost what Starbucks original concept was that Starbucks was the third place. You now create a social wellness club. That's the third place where people just let down their guard down and feel really comfortable. And that's the, that's the feeling I get every time I walk in, it's like, ah, it's like an oasis I'm in a very big and bustling city. It's just a wonderful oasis of wellness. And uh, I think everybody who walks in there gets that feeling. Yeah, that's that's the goal. So I'm happy that's what you feel naturally. Oh, it's 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 amazing. You know, talk a little bit now that you've proven the concept and you opened up in New York. What's the long term goals now? Now, how are you going to evolve what is already your wonderful base and, and the success that you've already had over the last four years? What's next? You're very young. You have a great brand. You're the media and press. Uh, you're the darling of the media and press for good reason, because you're doing really good for people out there that uh, come and use your facility. What's your personal larger goals for Remedy Place? Yeah, I mean, the big vision is to create a brand that's large enough to create one of the largest platforms in the health and wellness industry to provide free education. Because I think at the end of the day, People don't know how to take care of themselves. And I always say, you know, your mind and your body is your number one asset and you don't even have the instruction manual to it. You don't, so you don't even know how it works. How right, you're going right. to take care of it. So I'm like, if Remedy Place can give the world the instruction manual to their body and give them what they should have been taught their whole life, that's my vision for this brand. And, you know, of course, we'll be scaling our brick and mortar clubs. You know, we're doing about two new clubs a year moving forward. Um, they are evolving in really cool amazing ways and you're going to see some really big uh you know you're going to see some big amazing changes and growth you know from our learnings and our findings and you know we're listening to all of our guests and as a company we're learning so we're taking those learnings we're taking that data and every club moving forward will continue to get better and better um but then we're doing more than just our brick and mortar locations. We're getting into our own technology where we're partnering with the best um, manufacturers in the world and enhancing these, these products with our design and bridging the gap there. Uh, we're doing more of our product collection. We're bu building out a media and education um, 
platform. And then we have a lot of other things that I can't announce yet, okay. but we have a couple of huge partnerships that will bring us into different verticals. And at the end of the day, we just want to do cool things with cool people and make people feel better. So anytime we have the opportunity to be on, you know, like you, like an, another platform just to educate and hopefully motivate and inspire people, like that's, that's what it's all about. I want to talk about a couple of your services, but before we talk about a couple of services, we were, I was sharing off the air with you, um, uh, your people, your people are truly special. They, they, um, you have found a, a unique way to create a culture of humanity. And every time I walk in, no matter who's at the front desk or, uh, they are, they, they are warm, they're kind hearted, they're helpful, they're encouraging, and they're inspiring. And they're all doing really interesting things um, in their own lives that they, they give you a lot of credit for, inspiring and helping them to. I know three of the young coaches that you have and women and concierges that you have are studying acupuncture medicine. And they talk about it with me because I ask them about it. And they're they're all really into your the, what you've created, the culture you've created of healing and wellness and preventative how did you create that kind of culture? And was that part of your original mission and business plan? Yeah, I mean, we have the most incredible team in the world. And I think I think what's really interesting as I studied like the dynamics, I don't think culture is something that you create. I think culture just is, it, it becomes what it is, you know, in, in the way that, you know, it, I think when I analyze the work environment and the work, work culture, when you're working in like a restaurant or normal yeah. hospitality, yeah. you have so many people complain. Like think of like, it's tough to be in the service industry. Yeah. However, all of our guests that come in, they know that we're making them feel better and they're always happy. You know, like a guest can't come out of an ice bath class or acupuncture and be miserable. So I think the dynamic of the guest is always such a pleasurable thing. And we're working with really unique, incredible people, just like my practice, where I think the team's inspired by the people that we get to work with. And they're also learning from them and getting to know them. I also think that, you know, they get their own membership. So they also practice what they preach and they're leading by example. You know, for me, like everything's in remedy because I use it, you know, and it would be in my practice, if I told my patients they need to go on a certain diet or do their blood work and I wasn't doing it, how am I supposed to build an authentic relationship with a, a patient if I'm not doing what I'm asking them to do? Right. So the leading by example, and I would always say, is your doctor the healthiest person you know? Like, If someone's gonna be giving you health advice or say your finance guy was terrible with money, like you would never go to him, you know? If he or, was broke, if he was yeah. broke, you wouldn't wanna give him any of your capital, right? <laughs> so I think, you know, I think Good point. I think it's the combination of a really cool environment. I think it's that they get to be around amazing guests because our guests are amazing and that community is amazing. I think they get access to take care of themselves. Um, and I think we have really good leadership. You know, the GMs of each club are incredible. And as each new hire that we're bringing on and we're expanding our team right now, they're just also amazing people that you want to win by. And I think for me, that's my number one. Like, are you an incredible person that I want to enjoy the process with? And I think, I think so far we've just been able to attract really amazing people. And I think it's also exciting. Like we're the world's first social wellness club. I, and I think this is going to be the biggest thing to ever happen in the health and wellness industry. And I'm like, it's fun to like be a part of that ride. And I think a lot of the team does say all the time, like, how cool is it that we're doing this and the new club and this partnership and, um, I actually, next week we're doing our first, what we call a remedy rally, which, you know, our team is getting so big. It's hard to always communicate everything that's happening. Right. So now we've decided that once a quarter, I'm going to have a company wide meeting where I'm just going to tell everyone all the exciting things in the pipeline and all the things going on that way. It's just like one unified force. Everyone knows and is reminded of the mission and why we're doing what we're doing and how many people we're helping and what's in the future plans. And. I'm excited to do that because it's, you know, as it gets, as the team gets bigger and bigger, it's harder to have communication with everyone. So, you know, luckily some of the leaders that I brought on are also helping me implement some really cool ways to just like make sure the camaraderie is there and, and the communication and on all levels are there. 
For our listeners and viewers, we've got Dr. Jonathan Leary with us. He's the founder and CEO of Remedy Place. To find Dr. Leary and his colleagues and Remedy Place, go to www.remedyplace.com. Let's talk about some of the services there, though, and the importance of them. Let's start with my favorite, first of all, the breath work and the, and the, and the plunge pool uh, and sure. the plunge baths. Uh, first of all, I, I, after my third or fourth time at Remedy Place, I started realizing that I would even come just to listen to your breath work. And even if I couldn't do the plunge, the breath work was making me better every day and, and setting setting the tone for my day besides the plunge. Explain the importance of the one-two punch of your 11-minute breath work session that you are the voice of and the coach of uh, uh, electronically and the plunge together. Explain how that really interrelates and works and all the benefits that come out of uh, of each of those. Yeah. I mean, I think breath work is the most powerful to tool that humans have. Mm. And it's something that once you learn how to do it, it costs nothing. Anyone in the world can do it. And I think it's something as you learn how to push it in certain ways can have one of the biggest mental benefits out there out of any form of meditations. And so the only thing that I've ever found that you can actually shift from like a conscious state to a subconscious state, like you can have a full out of body experience with intense breath work, like you're altering the chemicals in your brain. And if you do it fast enough or for long enough, like people can have like a full psychedelic trip. It's crazy what the power of breath can do. That's not the point of it in this, in this setting. Right. Uh, the breath before is really to prepare your body. You know, it's to, you know, get you in the right mental state, but also enhance the oxygen utilization in your body before going through something difficult. And with our ice baths, we call it adaption training. Like, you're teaching your body how to handle the extreme. You know, just like you go to the gym to ha- like train your muscles, this ice bath is going to cha- train your thermoregulators. And I think also, I think in a time where people don't feel that they control their mind or their body, going in an ice bath, you're teaching your body that you are in control and that you can do it. And also that you're accomplishing something really hard. Um, and I think, while doing something really hard and the reason why we have a coach and the reason why we do it with other people with everyone with their own tubs is like you told me before like if you go in a tub by yourself you know it's you kind of maybe want to jump out you're like i don't know if i want to be here and it's hard but you put people side by side especially for their first couple times they don't want to be the first one to jump out so if, if that if that alone just makes them stay a little bit longer the benefits are going to be amplified and i think also, if we're going through adaption training and teaching our body something new, to have a coach there is so important. And I think, um, you know, like ice baths have been around forever, but I think they've really blown up while, you know, Remedy has started. And I think, you know, we've been able to be fortunate to put like most people that are publicly doing ice baths from like in the industry, like their first ice bath was with Remedy. And I think what's cool for me is any individual, right? If, if we can give them one experience that changes how they take care of themselves for the rest of their life, but then they also have a platform to influence and motivate people around them and talk about it. Like we're trying to change societal norms. Like we need every leader, every person that people look up to, to all make these changes because if they do it, people look up to them and then they do it. It's so so true. And, and you made the experience so nice uh, at, at Remedy Place. First of all, I can't even believe I still look back and I still pinch myself that the first time that my nephew and I did it together, uh, which was my first experience ever, we did six minutes. And then after that, I started doing seven and I never looked back. And your team coached me to do more, get the hands in faster, get the head in faster, go all the way in up to your neck. And it became so much. It's so you can just keep doing more with it and you just continue to get more benefits out of it. And the coaching and inspiration that your team gives and and the ex- great experience of the of your facility is just amazing and sharing it with my son-in-law, my nephew, one of my coaches and my physical therapist um they they all got the same experience out of it. They all want to come back, they all want to do it more, they all want to share it with more people. It's it's addicting and just wonderful. Uh you you've created a, a tremendous experience. Talk a little bit about give give just a quick quick thumbnail on ice baths and the and the great um uh, uh, benefits that you can have it. I mean, you know, you've created this place and good timing, great, great, beautiful place and platform. But when Andrew Huberman 
and Tim Ferriss and Joe Rogan are all talking about doing it every day themselves, man, you want to, you, you really, you've not only created the best in the first social wellness club, but you've got three of the greatest influencers and endorsers on the planet that could be pushing people towards your great services and, and, and uh, locations. Yeah. I mean, the benefits in short, like it obviously decreases inflammation, like any other cold therapy, it's improving circulation. It's going to help you sleep. Any aches or pains are going to be diminished because we are fighting against the inflammation. Like I was saying, the, the mental benefit, teaching your body that you're in control um, and getting through something challenging and training your thermoregulators how to, how to adapt to extreme temperatures. Um, you know, you get a huge rush of endorphins, a huge dopamine spike. So it's a big mood enhancement. And, you know, it's targeting your brown fat, you're leaning out, your metabolism spikes. There's nothing in the world that will shift your state of being mentally, physically, emotionally in six minutes than an ice bath. Like I think it's it amazing. Is powerful thing. Like think of how much before and after that, the ice bath experience, how much you change. And yeah. then you're just buzzing all day. All day, all day. I love it. Talk a little bit about the, the wonderful, uh, you have amazing and wonderful uh, and very comfortable hyperbaric oxygen tanks. I've not used yours yet. I, I use I've um, used hyperbaric oxygen um, numerous times in my life to recover from both concussions and from surgery with tremendous success. Talk a little bit about why people should like to try and use hyperbaric oxygen to improve their health and wellness. Yeah, I mean, I think it's gotten a lot of attention over the years because, you know, you have like the LeBron James or the Justin Bieber's posting about going in them. I think, you know, in short, Putting more oxygen into the body speeds up every biochemical healing process. Wow. So think, you know, it's that simple. No matter what you're struggling with, more oxygen entering the body, increased blood saturation rate of oxygen is just going to help speed up any healing process. So it doesn't really matter what you're recovering from or, or if it's not even about recovery, it's just about prevention and, you know, maximizing your oxygen utilization in the body. It is so crazy because it's so powerful, you know, and I think it's the awareness is finally shifting, even though it's been around for a while, like a lot of the things that we offer in Remedy, they've been around for a long time, but the awareness or the reason why or the place to go to or try it. And, you know, it's, it's just really, it's exciting because I think with any more awareness it creates more change. And if all the change in awareness is around these new technology, oh, not new technologies, the technologies that are allowing your yeah. body to holistically heal. Because all these things, they're not, they're not doing anything that's not holistic. They're just putting your body in a better state to do what it should be doing. And that's the real power there. And there's tremendous science behind everything we just discussed. Breath work, ice plunges, uh, hyperbaric oxygen. I mean, it's, it's, it's tr tell me if this statement is true or not. Disease yeah. cannot live in the presence of oxygen, especially, Correct. you know, large amounts of oxygen. Correct. Yeah. It's amazing. Go, I'm going down the hole in my mind of your wonderful place. And now we're at the end of the hole on the left-hand side, and we're in the cryotherapy uh, chamber. Talk a little bit about cryotherapy. Um, a, a lot of people have talked about it. Talk about what that does for uh, a person's body and, uh, and resilience as well. Yeah. So it's another cold another cold treatment so similar benefits in the sense that you know you, a lot of the benefits will be similar however mm. water conduction and air conduction are a little bit different okay so when you're in cryo it's negative 160 so much colder than our ice bath but um air conduction won't penetrate too deep into the body it's more surface level so your skin temperature will actually change more in cryo but in an ice bath water conduction is going to penetrate deeper into the core so you're actually, your core temperature cha is changing more. So you just have heightened benefits. So I would say for me, cryo is like my morning coffee. You can go in and out. You feel great. It's really refreshing. Right. And if you're dealing with any like surface level inflammation, it's amazing. So right. like a, um, you know, you felt like super puffy. That's a, it's a great way to like get the surface level, surface level inflammation out um, but if I had to pick one or the other between the ice bath and cryo, I would do the ice bath. I'm with you. I, I love both. both. And I love both. And I do both yeah. too. But I love, I love the, I'm now much 
much more into ice baths than the cryo, but I agree. They're both wonderful. And, but I get colder from the ice baths by sure, for sure. Yeah. Let's go back to the warm now. Stopping before the ice baths are the three wonderful um, uh, red light saunas that you have and the showers and that whole experience. What is, you know, again, the, the big influencers talk about the benefits, including Rhonda Patrick and again, Huberman and of course, Rogan. The, the the red light therapy and the and the and then the and the saunas that are that are integrated together. What's the benefits of now the heat and red light together as a one-two punch to people's health, wellness, and proactivity on taking care of their health? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of talk of like what's better, infrared or traditional. And I think what's exciting is like an, a traditional sauna is much hotter. And I think the benefit right. and where a lot of the research lies is it's the activation of the heat shock protein. And this protein gets activated, and that's where like all the benefits occur with this activation after 160 degrees. Most infrared saunas only get to around 150. So mm -hmm. infrared is a light therapy that will penetrate up to two and a half inches into the body and it heats you from the inside out. So you'll start profusely sweating and there's a really nice detox benefit of that. And the benefit is that you can last a lot longer so you're able to sit in that sauna and just profusely sweat for a longer period of time. However, the cool thing about the infrared saunas at Remedy is they actually go up to 170. So mm -hmm. we're able to have an infrared sauna that also gets the benefit of activating the heat shock protein. And in our future clubs, we actually have our new technology has the availability to be infrared and traditional at the same time, or you can pick either or. Wow. And talk a little bit about the the um, the wisdom of putting those three saunas right before the uh, the ice plunge. Is do people use the saunas, take a nice shower, and literally go right into the ice plunge and do contrast therapy? Yeah. So a lot of the times people will book um, the ice bath class after their sauna suite. Wow. So much so that in New York, we actually decided to do one suite that has you know, a contrast suite where you have it both in one for the people that want to be able to go back and forth or, you know, once you're a pro and you're going every day and you're like, maybe I don't need the coach. They can get the whole suite to themselves. Sometimes they're with a, it's up to six people in that suite. So you can go with six people um, and ends up being a little bit of a party in there. Do, um, is that just an Uber, an Uber way, an exponential way of creating more resilience for the body? Because now you're pulling the body one direction and then you're going swinging all the way to the other. Is that the theory behind it? Yeah, exactly. So it's once again, it's like another step within the adaption training, right. extreme heat and extreme cold. It's building resilience, you know, right. and your body gets better and better at it. And I say it's like, if you wanted to go run a marathon, you wouldn't be able to do that. Maybe not, maybe not be able to do that right off the bat, but you train and you get better and better. You know, as you start doing hot and cold therapy, the more you do it, the easier it gets and the better your body adapts. And then there's more ways that you want to manipulate the programming to like, always keep your systems on their toes so that you're not adapting too much. Understood. Talk a little bit about, and I'm going around the, the, the bend now, you have a, a beautiful room for uh, acupuncture. How busy, busy does that uh, stay? And do a lot of your guests and your members uh, uh, enjoy the acupuncture services that you have? People love acupuncture and cupping. You know, we do a combo where it's acupuncture and cupping in there. And, you know, we, Anyone walking out of that room, we call it Aki Stoned. You know, they legitimately like they <laughs> walk out floating. And it's so crazy how, you know, acupuncture overrides your nervous system in such a cool way that even like when all the needles are in me in, in my session, like I feel like this buzzing sensation through my body and I end up falling asleep. And when I wake up, I feel like I slept a whole entire night. And then, you know, the, the cupping with the gliding cupping, like, it is so incredible and and it's really amazing um so of course people love that and then right across we have our chiropractors but our chiropractors blend chiropractic physio and chinese medicine all within one treatment mm -hmm. so instead of going to three different doctors with three different philosophies it's one doctor one philosophy but three treatments in one so it takes care of the joints the muscle and the fascia and that's like the best manual work that you'll ever get um, our chiropractors are incredible and, you know, like it is like, if you ever get to do it or you should, you know, it, it is to. absolutely like you're going to become obsessed because there's no way or faster way to get pain-free 
And, you know, we're all, everyone has some type of aches or pains and like, you can't have pain if things are moving properly. So, you know, movement cures. So we're just restoring motion in the joints, the muscle and the fascia. And that's, that's the key. I love it. I'm walking down the hall now in my mind and that you have beautiful rooms where people can lay down and find one of the, some, like you said, some of the most relaxing, comfortable spaces I've ever laid down in. I do my breath work in there when the rooms are open, but I know I see a lot of people in there doing the IV work. Talk a little bit about the benefits now of the IV drips and why that's really tr part of some of the best preventative medicine uh, techniques that exist out there today. Yeah. So the interesting thing is like the supplement market is a little messy. You know, there's not a lot of regulations there and a lot of supplements are junk. And a lot of supplements are synthetic compounds that the body doesn't even recognize and you end up just peeing them out so it's expensive urine and i think people are spending so much on supplements and when you really look at it the bioavailability of most of these supplements are really poor so people think that they're actually absorbing a lot of these nutrients and not only sometimes are they not absorbing any of it but sometimes it's actually stressing the liver and kidneys because your body's trying to figure out what it is right so the cool thing about a vitamin iv is it doesn't have to go through the GI tract. So it's bypassing the GI tract and it's going directly into the bloodstream. So you're getting 100% of the nutrients that you need. So when we're doing our patient's blood work and looking at their micronutrient panel and looking at their deficiencies, you know, I could do my patient's blood work and they could be on a supplement for years. And I look at their blood work, I'm like, you're deficient in X, Y, and Z. And they're like, I take that every day. And I'm like, well, you know, that's a sign that not only is your body, you're wasting money, but it's also harmful. So right. I think what's cool is when we start looking at fixing deficiencies, IVs are the fastest way to regulate any of these deficiencies. And at the end of the day, we, we just need adequate levels of all the vitamins and minerals and proteins in our body. And if not, we're not going to optimally function. So not only is it a cool way to get hydrated, but it's a cool way to actually fix these deficiencies. And if, if you want to do your blood work, we can ex like find out exactly what you're deficient in and then put you in an IV program so that we can fix all those deficiencies. I love it. And what I also love is a social part of your club is you have a beautiful, as you said, a, a bar area uh, that's not a classic bar with alcohol. It has healthy drinks. It has healthy snacks. It's very peaceful. The smell is just heavenly in your place. You don't almost want to leave. You can bring your iPad or your phone and just chill out and get a, a wonderful calming experience and, and do a little work and get ready for your day, or at the end of the day, catch up on some emails or work and, and just get ready for a very comfortable and relaxing evening. I just think the oasis that you've created at WeHo, uh, which is the place I've gone to now over three dozen times, I think is just amazing, just amazing. Thank you. Let's I'm get into here. memberships. I just became a member because I'm in New York and Los Angeles so much, I know I'm gonna be able to use it. And I wanna have that, um, that ability to use your wonderful places. Talk a little bit about memberships. What do memberships look like? And and um, and, uh, and 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 why did you leave it so wonderfully open that a person like me who wasn't a member could come in and enjoy it first, and then understand how great it is, and I could become a member and talk a little bit about the varying membership um, programs that you have for people to get involved with your great social wellness club. Yeah, I mean, I think initially it was really. If my end goal is to change healthcare, I'll leave a positive impact on the world. To create a private members club, I'm cutting people out. And I think True. my end goal, it, it kinda, it's kind of counterintuitive. So I think what we've done is we have an inclusive club, so anyone can make a reservation, but for the people that we think are you know, amazing to add to the community that really value their health and they come so often, what we've done with the memberships, we've just put a lump sum of a lot of a lot of experiences it gave a very discounted price that way you know members feel like oh i'm getting taken care of i'm getting a good deal and then we cap the amount of members per club so it's like you know that's our exclusive side so we only have so many members that we allow at each club and and that's also to build the community right the people that are like our our ambassadors to like go and tell the world like you did today like you yep. said so many kind of things about remedy and True. I, you know those are like, those are our ambassadors, kind of. Well, it's not like that. That's the purpose of the show, to bring more, to make a, make a bigger tent and to have great people like you that are making the world a healthier and better place on the show. And the brand they created, that's the whole reason of the show.
That's the whole reason 16 years ago we created this. Um, wow. If I belong to WeHo, do I get access then to New York? How does that work on memberships and cross uh, partnerships and things of that such? Correct. Yeah. So with a membership, you either have, you know, the single club or multi-city. Um, so you, as we start expanding, you know, you'll be able to go to all the cities across the U.S. and be able to use the club with your membership. Doc, Doc Deliri, you two a year sounds amazing as an entrepreneur and sounds daunting as an entrepreneur. But as a member, it doesn't sound fast enough. I want you to be in Miami, <laughs> Chicago, Denver, Seattle. I mean, how, you know, talk a little bit about balancing the the need and the voids that exist in the marketplace and being a responsible entrepreneur and growing slow enough and, and smart enough so you don't get ahead of yourself. How does that work? And is too, and is too comfortable enough now, but do you think in two or three years, it's going to be five a year or 10 a year? Uh, how, what, what's your dream right now for, for growth? Oh man. You, you know, like <laughs> now that we're like bigger uh, and more complicated, it is, it is so, I don't think, I mean, I had no idea. My dad was in construction and I still had no idea between <laughs> lease negotiations engineering, architects, design, construction, permits, permits, permits. It, it is the most stressful yeah. industry I've yeah. ever seen. <laughs> and I think I honestly, I just, I don't know how, I don't know how people do it. You know, I, it's, <laughs> I'm working so hard and have such yeah. an amazing team that I'm like two a year. Like if I space these things out every six or seven months, I'm like, like right now I'm doing two at once. And I'm like, this is so hard, you know, but I, and like, you know, as our team grows and as we learn, maybe things get easier and, you know, we're seeing certain things get easier, but this is my first time doing two at once, one's in construction, one's in design phase. And I'm like, oh, wow. Like, you know, and I want to make sure that each club gets better yeah. and that we're learning, you know, and we right. learn so much from each club. Um, but if you ask, like everyone is saying the same thing, you know, why can't you be in the city? Can you open up here? I mean, we're right. getting reached out all over the world and I'm like, I wish I could snap my fingers and get these things open overnight, but. You're um, young. You're young, yeah, so they, it's going to happen. Whatever your dreams are, it's going to happen. Talk, talk a little bit about, um, you're building your second and third, uh, your your third and fourth location now at once. The third one's in New York. The fourth one is where? Boston. Boston. And and if you could take, a, if we had a map in front of us, I don't want you to give away any secrets or business, business uh, you know, trade secrets. Where would we put the pin? For five and six, if we're if we're we had a fun geography geography and map in front of us, or is, yeah. or is that to be I, yet to be seen? I mean, uh, I would say if you if you live in LA or New York or between both, they're the only other, two other cities that you probably travel to on a regular basis. Maybe we okay. maybe we start there. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. I know you have some big partnerships in the works. From talking with your ambassadors and your concierge and your and your and your uh, colleagues, what are you allowed to talk about any of the partnerships yet, or that's yet to come? Are we going to do that on the next episode we do together? Um, we gave a glimpse of a partnership, um, but I'm not allowed to say anything other than there's a partnership. Um, but it is with Kohler, um, and you will see that all unravel through 2024 with all the updates and more details on what that partnership looks like but partnering with them has been absolutely incredible and i've been working on it for you know almost a year now and uh big things in store with them here's what i want to do doc here's what i want to say I, I could sit here and talk to you for three more hours but what i offer to you is this a as you and i know entrepreneurship is a journey health and wellness is a journey holistic Health and wellness is an absolute journey. So I want to invite you back on the Impact Podcast next year. And next year, we'll bring our camera crew with us because sometimes we go on location and we'll come do an episode with you in your new location in New York. And you can then unveil all the new technologies, all your new partnerships, and we can actually show it visually and do a walkthrough and actually try one or two of the things on camera and show the world all the great things that Remedy Place is doing and why it's so beneficial to people to use Remedy Place for their health and wellness goals. Would love that. That would be great. Dr. Jonathan Leary, the founder and CEO of Remedy Place, to find Dr. Jonathan Leary and his colleagues and to go use Remedy Place and try it out for yourself. 
please go to www.remedyplace.com. Thank you, Dr. Leary, for creating a place that's designed to heal. Thank you for making us all healthier. And thank you for just making the world a better place overall. Thanks, John. This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by Engage. Engage is a digital booking platform revolutionizing the talent booking industry. With thousands of athletes, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and business leaders, Engage is the go-to spot for booking talent, for speeches, custom experiences, live streams, and much more. For more information on Engage or to book talent today, visit letsengage.com. This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by ERI. ERI has a mission to protect people, the planet, and your privacy, and is the largest fully integrated IT and electronics asset disposition provider and cybersecurity-focused hardware destruction company in the United States, and maybe even the world. For more information on how ERI can help your business properly dispose of outdated electronic hardware devices, please visit eridirect.com.